So uh, let me introduce myself. So my, my name is uh, Cecilia Angulo, okay? My background is in, in mathematics. So uh, there is no surprise if there will be some uh, equations in my presentation. No, it's, it's, it's a joke. Don't worry about that. So my, my, my main research topic are on artificial intelligence and, and robotics. Okay, in fact, I, I was the founder of the of the main research center of on AI in the in Spain that is called EDI. So it's a research center in the UPC that uh, we are around 70 people that are uh, permanent professors and researchers. So uh, my main duty today is uh, working in, in this management part of the of the research. But what, what I want to, to introduce uh, today is some skills that I think that are interesting <clears throat> for uh, people that are starting to make research, okay? So uh, I can try to imagine when I was 30 years younger than now, <laughs> working all the time with the algorithms and working all the time trying to tune the parameter in order to get the best accuracy and trying to get uh, better results in time and uh, I can I can I can imagine that okay but there is a moment that you are making a question okay why why why, why I am doing that why uh, I will apply my research in this domain what are the benefits for this research and it's in this moment that I think that uh, Guillem was introducing at the start that you realize that it's very important to work in teams that they are multidisciplinary. So teams that are conformed with people from medical professionals, caregivers, uh, social scientists, uh, physicists, and so on. Okay? And you, you are realizing that all of them have a, a different language, uh, but all of them have a, a, a very, very great spirit working uh, to, to try to benefit the, uh, the community. Okay? So my, my main research is also about uh, human environments, okay? It's about caring robots, but I am considering a human environment that is a bit different, okay? I am considering the human environment that is the, the workplace, okay? So what I am interested in is when we are in the workplace, especially when we are in a, in a factory, <coughs> that everything is generated, designed, centered on the, on the, especially manufacturing, okay, around the machine, there is one important element there, that is the human, okay? So you need to take into consideration the operator and you need to take care of this operator, okay? So this research is mainly re related with these three projects, okay? The first one is about collaborative human-centered AI, and the second uh, and the third project are about how to collaborate in workspaces between people and robots, okay? especially robots. It can be processes, it can be also machines, but especially with, with robots. So in short, I will work in three main topics. Okay? The, the third one is why carrying robots are important in manufacturing, okay? because safety and health is also in manufacturing, okay? And the workplace is also one human environment, and the soft skills are also important in harsh environments, okay? So this is the first point. <clears throat> the second point is when you are obtaining your data, when you are obtaining your results, it's very important how you are designing the experience, okay? And this is something that uh, we have been learning during, during, during the last 20 years, okay, from social scientists. So you have one hypothesis, and according to this hypothesis, you must design your experience, and you must decide which are the data that you will get, which are the measurements that you will use. Okay? So this is not something that is coming later. This is something that is starting from the experimental design. Okay, so this is the, the other point that I will work. And the third point that I will uh, uh, talk today 
is about the mental workload. Okay, is how try to connect robots or machines with humans. Okay, in the cognitive level. Okay, because when we are thinking in planning, the machines they don't have planning. Okay, this is something that we are embedded into the machine, but they have only numbers. Okay, and this is something that this deep learning is making aware all the time. So you were trying to find where are the edge, you were finding, not trying to find where are the corners, you were trying to find all these elements in computer vision. And finally, the machine tells you, hey, man, the only thing that I need is the pixels. That's all, because I am a machine. So in order to make learning, I don't need this, this uh, pre-process. Okay, in the in the in the human sense, okay, it's obvious that you need to pre-process the information and you need the convolutional part and so on, but not in the human sense, in the machine sense. So we need to be connected in, in both sides in this cognitive part. Yeah, this is a research that I am developing with uh, Dr. Vera Ponza and with uh, Alejandro Chacon. Okay, Alejandro is, is coming this Friday to the UPC in order to, to defend the PhD thesis. So if you have the opportunity, you are welcome to, to, to hear him in the PhD defense this Friday in that safe school. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so the first point is about the factory. Okay, this is more or less a, a, a picture about a current factory uh, where the main part are the machines, okay? You can see that we have a robot, we have another robot, we have another robot. People is telling you the robots are into the hells, but you can observe that this is not real. The, the, what is into the hell is the human, okay? It's not the robot. So this is a machine dimension system, okay? We are not taking into consideration the human. The human is there uh, almost like an accident, okay? Like the noise. And we want to move from these machine center factories to one real collaboration between humans and machines. Because in the moment that the robots are exiting from the factories, and I am talking about autonomous vehicles, for instance, I am talking about robots that are cleaning at home, robots that are disinfecting at hospitals, we are talking about robots that are taking care of all that, then we need to collaborate with them. Okay, and we need to collaborate in the physical part, we need to collaborate in the cognitive part, we need to collaborate in the sensorial part and the perception part. Okay, so all these uh, elements are important. And the good point is that, that the new approach that is called Industry 4.0, okay, this, this full industrial revolution, is in the good, in the, in the good uh, uh, pathway. Okay, so we are moving from, from the SIM, so the computer integrated manufacturing, where what you are trying to do is a factory without humans. Okay, people was talking about no light factories, okay, because there are no humans, so you don't need lights. So why you need lights? It has no sense. We are moving from this part to another approach that is data driving factory. Okay, so now you are hearing about enterprise resource planning, ERP, you are uh, uh, hearing about uh, 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 your customer man man resources management, so CRM, you are hearing about MES, you are hearing about this kind of uh, acronyms that mainly are worried about data, okay? Is I, in order to manage my system, in order to manage my factory, what I need is data, okay? Is data driving factory. But there is a point that we are very worried, okay, especially in, in Europe, okay, in Europe, most of the companies are small and medium enterprises. <clears throat> the cobots today are not so expensive, okay, so this robot is maybe, I don't know, $30,000 or, or euros, okay, maybe 100,000 euros, so it's not more than the salary of one operator or two operators. So why are not there? in a small and medium companies. Why? This is, this, this is, this is the, the question. And the answer that, that we are proposing is that we are moving from the same version to the 
industry 4.0 version, but in fact, robotics are not moving to this new version, okay? They are still working in this SIM-oriented system, okay? Try to think in warehouses like, in warehouses like Amazon. You have the robots with the packages in one side, and you have the people in the other side that they are making the packaging. So they are, yes, they are sharing the space, this is true, but they are not really collaborating, okay? Why? Because there is not a language, there is not a common language between the robots and the humans, okay? And this is the point that we are trying to solve, okay? This is the, the, the point where we are working. You can believe that, you cannot believe that, in any case, the current state of the art about collaborative robots is universal robots. You can go to the web page of Universal Robots and to check the case stories that Universal Robots is selling you. And in all of them, it's true that there is a shared space, but it's not true that there's a collaboration between robots and humans. Okay, and, and we are worried about that. Okay, the current state in, in, in 2020, <laughs> 2022 is still that. We are in a shared space. This is night. We have no hail, no, no jail but there is not a real collaboration. And why that, okay, why that? Look, this is the, 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 the typical uh, pyramid in order to explain how the data is arriving to the, to the ERP. And look, we have the sensors, we have the machine control, we have the process control, we have the production control, we have the enterprise control or planning, but there is no humans there. If we are talking about industry 4.0, we need operators 4.0. And they are not here. Okay, this is this all concern why they are not here. And why is mainly by two reasons. Okay. <coughs> the first reason is the dialogue. Okay, so the, the working dialogue between the, the, the operator and the process. Okay. So the operator are not concerned if they need to change from one workplace to another workplace from today to the next week. Okay, they are used to that, but they need to have one explanation about why I am changing to a new workplace, and I need to learn about my new place. So the problem is, okay, I can learn a new topic, I can learn a new a new, a new theme, I can learn a new workplace, but I need that somebody is explaining why I must move there and how I can learn. This is the first point, okay? And this is the part that we, uh, uh, I will explain today, okay? The other part that is more related with robots is that we are talking about operators. The operators, they don't have coding skills. So you cannot ask the operators to code, to program the robot. It has no sense. They are operators. So the problem with the company is that when they are buying the robot, they are not buying a solution. They are buying a problem, okay? Because yes, it's possible to do a lot of things, but in order to do that, you must program your robot. And they don't have these skills. So the problem is that you are not buying the robot. You are not buying a solution. You are buying a problem. Okay, it's similar like when you are buying a game. Okay, for your iPad. Okay, if you need a lot of time in order to learn the game, if you need. It has no sense. You are not playing to that. You are not buying this game. Okay, so this is the other dimension. Okay, this, this is a dimension that today I will not work. I will work in the in the in the dialogue. Okay, between the the the, the human. And the, and the process. And in order to do this dialogue, I need to have in what is called, I, I need to work in what is called the cyber physical systems and cyber human systems. Okay. In the cyber physical systems, look, we have the same levels that we were having in industry 4.0. Okay. So here we have sensors, here we have the machine. Here we have the process. Here we have the the, the uh, uh, sorry the the cognition about the process. So how it is behaving, and finally you have the management. 
So it's the same pyramid. But when you are thinking about humans, that is totally different. Okay? So the smart connection level has not sense for the humans. This is not one skill for humans. You are not testing, you are not sensing all the time. Okay? To transform data to information, this is not one special skill for the humans. You can understand, but it's not your skill. The cyber level is the same, it's not the, 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 the important point. The moment that the human is having better skills than the machine is at the cognition level. It's in this level that the human can feel empowered. Okay. I, I, I remember that Guillem was also talking about that. Okay. You, you, in order to adopt a new technology, you need that the early adopter feel empowered with the new technology. Okay. And this is the moment that the humans feel that this most more cognitive than the machine. Okay. Maybe not with the new version of Bert and Dali, okay, but in, in manufacturing, that is still working. And finally, you have the configuration level. And this is very clear that the, the, the human is better. So what we want to do is to establish the connection between the cognition level of the machines and the cognition level of the human. And in order to do that, okay, and here you can find the, the, the reference, okay, we were developing a, a theory, okay? And in this theory, look that the robotic part is divided in two parts, okay? So we have the cobot here, but also we have one embodied agent, okay? So another robot or one display or some hardware that is giving instructions to the operator, okay? And this is very important from the cognitive point of view, okay? So you are the operator, you are one expert operator in your process. There is, or there are new changes in your, in your, in your process in the factory, and now you have a cobot, and somebody is telling you that the cobot is a helper, okay? The cobot is there in order to help you in tasks that are all the time the same, so they are repetitive, in tasks that they need to be very accurate, so they, the robots are better, okay, that they, you, you need to be timing, so the robots are better, but the robot is a helper. So what the operator cannot admit is that the robot is giving instructions to the operator. If you are a helper, you are not my boss. So I am not accepting your, 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 uh, 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 your, your teaching skills, okay? I, I, I am not accepting this tutoring part. So we need to divide, okay? We need to divide this introduction of the robotics in two parts, okay? One is the visible part, that is the cobot. And for sure, it will behave like, like a helper. But then you need also another part that can be implemented in the cobot, okay? But from mental workload, okay, for, 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 uh, for, from, from mental health, you need that this something different, okay? So I can accept that this part is the tutor, okay? Because there are instructions and this is coming with a, a, somebody that is trying to teach me about the new situation. So I am learning from this tutor and my helper in this situation is this code, okay? And this is something that technically has no sense because it can be the same, but from one cognitive point of view, it's very important in order that the operator adopt this new technology, okay? And in this form, we are creating what we are calling the human cyber physical system, okay? So one system where the human part, the cyber part, and the physical part are all together integrated. Okay? This is our approach. And how to link, how to link these both approaches? So how to link the robot or the process with operator? Then we are designing, okay, a new system. <coughs> we are designing these two, two elements where in the in the right you have the cobot, okay, and look that near to the to the cobot you have the energy the transmission, the drivers, and so on, okay. Obviously, you need the servo, so you need the intelligent control, you need the intelligent sensing, you need to make decisions on the robot. 
but then the robot must be able to learn okay to generate cognition okay for us reinforcement learning and cognition are very similar okay it's not the same we can discuss about that but it's, it's similar okay and in the other part we have the operator okay the operator that is working with the robot so the human part that want to take the control of the robot that want to make decisions and analyze the output from the robot that want to know okay what to feel to perceive what is happening with the robot and from here the operator is also learning so what we need to connect is these two elements okay this learning part from the operator and this learning part from the robot and this is something that that uh, uh, Adrian was explaining before. Okay, one one is, is, is reinforcement learning. This is a very good example. Okay, so try to imagine that the robot is delivering something to the human, and the, and the human is making some operation with this this element. It's very different if the human is a lefty person, so he's using the left hand. That is a right person. He's using the right hand. So depending where is the person the robot can learn that it's better to put the element in this place or this, or this place. The only thing that you need to do is to change the goal of the primitive because the, the primitive movement is the same. Okay, but the robot is helping the human, is taking care of the health of the human because it's ergonomics, because safety, and is delivering the, 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 the package in a different place. I know it's something that is minor, but it's not minor if you are doing that 100 times each hour. Yeah, it's not a minor issue. So this is something important. And it's not the same that you are located in a uh, 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 in, in one place that is lower or is higher. Okay. So when the, the, the robot is delivering you, not only to feed it, this is obvious, but when you are working, it's the same, depending how you are using your arm, you will be more tired or you will be more comfortable. So again, we are taking care of the operator. Okay, so these are only minor issues, okay, but it's only in order to be illustrative about what we are talking about. Okay, and this is something that the robot can learn from the operator. And the operator can learn that the robot can change the, the movement, okay, and the operator can inform to the robot, hey, look, I want that you are making the movement higher. Or I want that you are making the movement more on the left, or more on the right, or more straightforward. I don't know, or, or, or faster, or slower, or wait, wait a minute. That is the important part. You, you, we need to work in this language, OK? This is the, the, the important, important system. Sorry, Cecilio, you have a question in the chat. OK. And you read it. The yeah. problem is that I cannot visualize the chat. Okay, yes. What will you define as really real collaboration? Okay. I mean, when I am talking about collaboration, collaboration has several dimensions, and this is something that people in ERI can explain you. The, the easy collaboration, so the, the, the shorter collaboration, is that you are working in one shared space. Okay. So the robot is not in a jail, the human is not in a jail, they are in the same space. This, this is a, a, a collaborative robot, but this is the, the lower level of collaboration, okay? The higher level of collaboration is that the robot and the human are collaborating on the same issue. So this is a robot that is taking care of this part of the, of the pen, and this is a human that is taking care, of the, taking care of this part of the pen, and they must manipulate. So both the robot and the human are working together at the same time and on the same element okay and this is what i mean by real collaboration okay uh, according to the definition if we have a robot and a human and they are working in the same space they are collaborating okay mm, but you know this is the lower level of, of that i think that this uh Alberto, Alberto Olivares, okay, that, that, that uh, in the IRI, that, that they have a, a taxonomy about that, about the, this sharing collaboration. Yeah, this is what I mean by, by real collaboration. It's, a, it, it's not, maybe real is not the, 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 the good name, but this is a, 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 a tighter 
collaboration with robots and, and humans. Okay. Uh, the most popular case is one autonomous robot. Okay, uh, one autonomous vehicle. Okay, one autonomous car. One autonomous car is a robot, but this is a robot where the people is inside of the robot. So this is a total collaboration between robots and humans, for instance. This is the the way that we must move. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, in order to show this collaboration, okay, this is this is a, a good point that Juan Modesto was expressing. We need to make some experiments. Okay, we need to make some experiments. Then uh, we want, okay, we want to take the best part of both worlds. Okay, so from the robot part, we want to work on the accuracy, the precision, the reliability, and from, from the operator. We are very excited with the flexibility of the operator, the cognitive part, the dexterous part. Okay, so if you are working in manipulation with the robot, you can imagine how complicated, how complex is the, this dexterous part. Okay, and thinking about that, okay, thinking about that, we were defining, okay, how to link both systems, maybe using human variability. Okay, so we are making a task. If the task is completely made by that robot, there is no variability because it's accurate, precise, reliable. Okay, in the moment that you want to introduce the flexibility and the dexterity of the human, the human is not working all the time at the same time, at the same pace. Okay. I am sure that the boss will try that you are doing that, but we are not machines. Okay, if we want to take, take care of the humans, we are not machines. Okay, so we must take into account that the humans they can have variability in the integration. And the how to measure, okay, how to measure this integration is or we were deciding that this is about mental workload. Okay, so we are imagining that we have a human making one task in our workplace, and now this human is changing to another workplace, or this human is added with another task. Okay, are we increasing a lot the mental workload of this human? So is that so complicated? So Christopher, Christopher is asking with learning and intelligent control, what is the ability of the robot for that to an input change better than new function detected, especially in real time. You can do reform and learning. You can ask, you can ask uh, Adria Gulume about that. Okay. I, I was putting one example about the about the uh, uh, about the, the trajectories. Okay. Try to imagine that what you need to do is from the from the process is coming the uh, this element, okay, and what you need to do is to make a check, okay, you make you make a check, but now you are not right, you are left, okay, so for you, it's better that the element is finishing here, and this is something that using the sensor, I can observe if the man is, or the operator is using this hand, or is using this hand, or I can observe if the operator is sitting higher, or is sitting lower, and I can adapt that. Okay, so this is very physical. So, for instance, you try to imagine that we have a, an operator that is one young operator, and he prefers to smoke a cigarette. Okay, so he will be happy if you are going in a faster pace, but at the end you have five minutes in order to uh, to check TikTok, you know. Or maybe you have another operator that is an older one. Or today is not your best day, you know, because yesterday you were in a party and today you are more cat. So you can reduce the pace. And this is something that you can integrate with the robot. Okay. So the point is that we have a dialogue between the human and the robot. Okay. And this is something that the, the robot can perceive, but it's also something that the human can declare. Okay. Hey, look, today I am very tired. So I prefer to reduce the, the, the pace. Then the robot, not the robot, the, the, 
the, the, the, the, the, the mess, okay, is reconfigurating the process and can tell you, okay, don't worry, I can reduce the pace until this speed. Why? Because we need to finish this task, okay? Because there is a track that is coming in this time and we need to finish this track. Okay, I can assume it, you know? So the point is that we need that the operator is aware about why is in this moment there at this speed and in this workplace. This is the important point. And this is something that can be obtained from the human interaction with the, with the robot, but also with the process, okay? So try to maintain your, 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 your mind open, okay? The robot is not only the, the terminal element, okay? The robot is the complete process. Okay? All the information is there. We are data driven, all is there. So you can inform the operator, okay? And, and you can inform, look, I know that I was informing about that, but we need to go faster. We need to have a better quality with that because, you know, we were getting this bad uh, feeling for one uh, customer or we were getting that whatever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So uh, what we are talking about is about carrying robots or carrying processes in manufacturing. Okay, it's how the process, how the factory is taking care of the operators that are working there. Okay, and we are working for the moment in the cognitive level. Okay, and in order to do that, we need two things, okay? I, I, I was explaining you, I will explain th three things, okay? So the first, way, the first one is to motivate the research. The second one is I need to design the experience, okay? I need to justify why this design of the experience is the good one. And finally, we need to develop the experience, okay? So in this case, when we were designing the experience, because we are very interested in the workload, okay, look at this is another study that we were publishing in the science. We will suppose that the operator have a, ma a main task, okay, and the main task is this tower of handling. Okay, this is something that is currently demanding. Okay, so we have a, an operator that is working there. And in the middle, we have a robot that is making one assembly task. Okay, and the assembly task is we have a base. From the, this base, after that, we have, I don't know, a, a building in the middle, okay? This is something that the robot is doing. But you know the problem? The problem is that I need to put the cap. And when I am putting the cap, it's very important that the, the metallic element is in this, in this side. But you know, the robot has not a sensor for that. So if you left the robot to do that, sometimes, will be in this form and sometimes will be in this form. Okay, so you have two options. The first option is I will put a sensor, I will recall my process and then everything is automatic. This is one possibility. You must stop the process, you must buy the sensor, you must uh, uh, record your system. The other possibility is, look, I have one operator that is two meters from there. So we can ask the operator, hey, take a look. You can do this task. And we are, we are saving this, the, the, the software part. We are saving the sensor part. We are saving the stopping part. Okay? That's the point. And, what we are, and, and this is very, very popular in, in small and medium companies. Okay, So this is one example that we are using because the companies are telling us. This is the typical example because the next user is not using that, okay? That is the, the European, but the UK, okay? And in the UK it has three parts. And the next one is the Japanese. And in the Japanese is different. I mean, it's, so I, I, and it's only one client, it's only one customer that they have this, this problem. So I cannot buy N, N sensors about that, okay? It has no sense. I will not take profit from that. Yes. So 
what we have is that in the other in the other task we have a real collaboration between between humans and robots okay so we have a, a shared space okay and then we have the robot and we have the humans and then you can see the days and the building and then the human is putting the cat okay obviously if the human is stopping with this task the quality okay the efficiency of this task will be reduced what we are assuming is that this reduction is not so much okay so we are not overwhelming the the user adding this task okay this is what we are we are presuming okay obviously this is a experience where we are working with users so we need to pass the the the, the institutional review board statement okay so we need to, to pass the, the the ethical committee okay and for that okay, this is something that you think is not important is the basics okay because you are working with humans it's similar when you are working with data that is coming from a city town okay you are working with data that are coming from citizens so you need to be aware that everything there is legal and everything there is ethics okay this is very important okay it's not a matter that the data is there so i will use no 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 it, it has no sense there. okay and obviously also you must declare where the data will be made available okay because this is a project that is uh, declared like a, a public so you must declare this, this kind of things, okay? And the next point that is very important is the measures, okay? So from the experimental scenario, I will get some data, but the data that I will get, I need to measure according to the output that I am expecting, okay? Because I am working in the workload, in the cognitive workload, I need four measures. Okay, I need, and this is coming from the from the uh, uh, social sci scientist. Okay, the first measure is effectiveness. The second one is efficiency. Another one is user satisfaction. Okay, and the final one is performance. Okay, so you have eff effectiveness, efficiency, user satisfaction, and performance. And in order to measure these elements, you need to define something that can be measured, okay? So in the first case, I am measuring the task completion, right? So how many times I am completing the task? The second one is the time that I am getting in order to complete the task. For the user satisfaction, the, the popular is to make questionnaires, okay, the popular uh, case. And for the performance, I need to define some K performance indicators, okay? And after that, I need to have the variables that can be really actually measured. That is the number of moves that you are performing in the, in the, tower, of, in the, in the tower of Hanoi, the number of cycles that you are making in the Tower of Hanoi, the time to task, okay? So the time that you are getting in order to finish the task the cycle time source that is a, a, a very popular questionnaire for user, user satisfaction and for the performance i am using the wait time okay, so how much time the robot is either is stopped is unused and the cycle time okay and this is very important okay this so so I, I can imagine that most of you are only worried about accuracy okay or you are only worried about f1 score or you are only worried about i don't know this kind of, of, of precision uh, uh, sensitivity but this is not what is happening in real scenario with, 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 uh, when you are using when you are working with humans okay so mm, take your time in order to learn about that yes and then you need to define that okay you need to define with this the performance okay so the total time that you are using for the for the for the 
experiments, no? So it will last for 15 minutes. I am expecting that at least seven word cycles are completed. Okay, so you need to define that. Okay, you need to define the different ranges, okay, about the grades for the questionnaire. Okay, you need to define what it means cycle time, what it means white time, and more and more KPIs that we are defining. Okay, this is very important. Okay, this is something that somebody must do. Okay, and this is something that normally when you are in the technical part, you are avoiding. Okay, but this is in the design of the experience. So this is from the very beginning. So please take care of that. If you are not doing that, people will not publish your data. People will not publish your paper. Okay? Because they will ask you, did you pay, did, did you pass a, a ethical committee? No. Do you design the experiment? No. Are you publishing your data? No. Nothing. Okay? So you need that your data is really easy to be compared with other people. It's only to declare what you are doing, that's all. And then we have the results, okay? So we have the, the, the number of experience. So this is the number of people that were performing that. And so you need some levels, okay? Some minimum level in order to, uh, to, to, to do, okay, this test is working properly, okay? So, this case for the SUS, you need at least this percentage. In our case, is larger, so this is excellent. Is it? so it's something that the experience was well done. This is the point. It's only statistics. It's, it's, not, it's, it's the same reason why are you working in cross validation with five fold cross validation or ten fold cross validation, or why are you repeating thirty times the same experience? It's the statistics. It's the same. Okay, you are applying the statistics. And that's it working. Okay, and this is the result that you are getting according to the experience. Okay, so this experiment is easy to use. Okay, it's not very complex. Okay, uh, people was almost not needing support, so it can be autonomous. It's well integrated. Okay, it's not very consistent. Look at this, it's not very consistent. It's easy to learn, okay? It's not cumbersome, okay? It's very confident, so people feel comfortable to make to make that. So this is all the different elements that you need to, to have. Okay, this is my experience. Okay, this is some, some, some other KPIs. Yes. And then <coughs> you must develop the experience. Okay, so this is my situation. Okay, this is my, my, my environment. This is how I am developing the experience. And now, okay, I, uh, this is how I am designing the experience. And now I will develop the experience according to my design. Okay. And here I am declaring, look, for the robot, sorry, look, I am uh, working in two tasks. There is one task, that's one, that is to solve the Tower of Hanoi with five parts. And this is something that the human will operate. And for the task two, I have several uh, uh, activities. One is get the base, another is get the building, another is get the cap, another is the reload the storage, assembly the product, and palletize the product. Okay? And you need to declare who is performing this task. Okay? This is the typical pick and place problem. Okay? But you need to declare that. Okay? It's very important because if somebody is making a similar approach, but they are changing. Now the base is get by the human and the cap is get by the cobot. They can explain why it's different, you know? So you are declaring where are the differences. Another point that is very important, in this form, in fact, you are generating one taxonomy, okay? So you are dividing your task in several activities. So if you want to make planning, you can use these activities, okay? Is this activity, then this activity, then this activity, and so on. Okay, so it's very, very important, okay, that you are designing very well your experiment. Okay, so robotics and AI is not only a matter of accuracy. I am getting the best accuracy. That's all. No, 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 it's, it's, it's not the point. 
Okay, no, no, please. This is not the point. And not especially if you are working with you. Okay. In order to measure the mental workload, then we are using one index that is very popular. That is the called the NASA TLX index. Okay, that is one index that was developed by the NASA for the astronauts. Okay, in order to to, to observe how cumbersome, how complicated were the task. Okay, and here you have a human that is performing a task that is only the tower of hanoi so this is the baseline and then we have the human that is completing this task and also is completing this one okay so the, the robot is asking hey look i am putting the building into the base and i want that you put the cap top to the building okay so we have these two tasks our hypothesis is that the mental workload in the case that you need to solve the Tower of Hanoi and the collaborative assembly, okay, so in the case that the human must be aware of both tasks, will be similar, okay, will be similar to only the mental workload for the Tower of Hanoi plus one delta. Okay, and we are calling that delta because we are assuming or we are expecting, sorry, we are expecting that this mental workload will be not so much. Okay, so if the new task is not adding a lot of cognitive uh, workload because it's physical, it's, it's only to put something in this form, okay, it is expecting that this is not adding a lot of mental workload. And in order to do that, look, that we are doing is to define some super scales. So the mental demand, the physical demand, the temporal demand, the overall performance, therefore, and the frustration level. Okay, this is something that is coming from the NASA t -Links. And this is the result. Okay, we are measuring all the different uh, uh, dimensions. And you can you can see that the the level of frustration when you were solving only Tower of Hanoi was higher. Look at this, it's higher than the level of frustration when you are solving Tower of Hanoi plus the collaborative assembly. Why? Because for the human it's like a rest. You are not more concentrated on that. Okay, so you can forget, so it's, it's not disturbing. Okay, the point is, it's not disturbing. It's making a rest for the human. Okay, so it's, this is very, very uh, 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 cognitive consuming and you are making a rest and you are coming back. Okay, this is, the, this is the point. Obviously, the performance is reduced. Okay, look, the performance, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Look that the performance is also increased. Okay, and the time that you are getting is more or less the same. The physical task is obviously a, a little bit higher when you are using the assembly. Okay. But therefore are very similar. Okay. And the mental workload, yes, is increased, but not too much. So this is the delta that we are working with. Okay. So, yes, this is the delta. So the, the first task was demanding. Look, look, this is the, the, the baseline, okay? The baseline is 15. So we are arriving, okay, to this mental uh, workload is almost into the limit, okay? So try to be careful with that. So don't increase the, 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 the workload mentally, but look that the level of frustration is reducing. Okay, this is very important. So, so you are increasing the mental workload, but in fact, it's like a rest for the human. Okay? And the performance, the total performance is increasing. Okay? This is the, the result. And you can actually okay, make these uh, 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 declarations. Okay? You can declare that because you were defining the different measures, you were defining your experience, you were defining that, you were defining the activity, you, you know. So in this context, this is what is happening. And if you want to compare it, it's very easy to compare. The, the only thing that you need to do is 
to change this element, to change this activity, to change this measurement, to change this hypothesis. Yes. And that's all. Okay, so what 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 I I, I, I wanna do in this in this small talk is try to combine you. It's not everything around the data, it's not everything around the algorithms, it's not everything around the robot, it's everything around the human. Okay, and if you want to consider the human, then you must define the experience and you must develop the experience according to the human measurements and that's all. thanks a lot thank you Cecilio, for this inspired uh, presentation i don't know if we have any any question from the participants I know that it's a, 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 a presentation that is a, a, a bit different, okay? So it's not the... Uh, I can also explain about the theory and algorithms and so on, okay? But I think that it's important that you have into consideration these demands, okay? When you are working with robots and humans. I have a question from Mark. Yeah, what do you think are the most important aspects that can impact mental workload? Uh, there is one aspect that is very, very important and is very related with, with, the, with the mental workload, that is frustration. Okay? Frustration and mental workload are, are very related. Okay? So maybe you, you have the, the skills to make the task, but if you are frustrated these days, and you know, it's, this is not working, this is not working, but you have the skills, yeah, but it's not working. So this, this is important. And finally, you have you have the measurements, so you can you can employ the measurements about the, the, the mental workload. Yes, and the, the NASA TLX is a very very good uh, system to, to measure that. Uh, the next step is uh, yes, is which are the the changes that you must do in order to reduce the mental workload? Okay, or from from the from the company point of view is how much cognitive demanding can be the new task before you achieve the limit of the mental workload, okay? So you are working in a mental workload 15, and now you are reaching 17, and you can, you can achieve 20, okay? So you can still, you can still progress, okay? So the, the, the second task can be more complicated, more difficult. Okay, and the level of frustration, it's okay. In fact, you reduce it. How do you measure the human well-being during working in cooperation with robots? The, the human well-being, okay. How can you de define the human well-being? This is the, the question. Human well-being is a measure, is, is, a, is a variable. Can it be measured according to what? Okay, so try to escape of these general definitions. Okay, but your algorithm is biased. It's biased in which sense? Your data is biased. It's biased in which sense? It's biased. According to your results, the results are biased, but not my question. But not my data. Okay, so try to escape about general questions. Okay, if you are talking about human well being, what do you mean by human well being? This is the first question to be done. And after that, we can discuss, okay, if this measure is appropriate or is inappropriate. Is the, the system that you are using is appropriate or is, is accurate? But try to use measures that they can be uh, uh, measured. That, that means you can put numbers on that. Does it mean accuracy is not really important in the design experience? Yes, it, it, it is important. Look that we are talking about the performance, okay? And we are talking, uh, yes, about the performance, okay? So look that the performance is important, yes? But this is not the only point that is important, okay? Because if for a, if for a factory, this is the only point, all of us will be slaves, you know? And this is the reason why one robot is a robot, because it's a mechanical slave. Okay, that's the point. 
And we don't want that the operators feel like a robot because they will feel like one slice. This is the, the, the main point. So yes, okay, accuracy is important, performance is important, but in this case, the accuracy is better because now the, the quality control is made when you are putting this element, okay? So you are doing quality control. Obviously, you don't know if you will last five minutes or five minutes 20, because there is a human in the middle, but that's all, okay? So there is a trade off all, all the time, okay? <laughs> this is uh, when, when you are training one uh, super vector machine, okay? You want to, to minimize the error or you want to increase the slack variables? There is a trade off, okay? There's always a trade off between one dimension and another dimension. <laughs> And also may that escape rot from frustration be bad in future terms. Maybe workers prefer to relay more in codes and lose a bit of practice. Okay, this is the same situation that we have today, for instance, with Google Maps. Okay, Google Maps is a very good tool, but the people is telling you that they are losing the skills about be oriented using a map. Because you are going to the Google Maps, you put the final location, and you are forgetting everything. So um, again, okay, if, if you left that the machine is doing the task, that means that your skills are, are not more needed. Okay? It doesn't mean that your skills are not useful. Okay, so we need people that they are able to interpret maps, but maybe not all the time. So Angel, in my opinion, doesn't need to be that way. I just wanted to know if you saw some results in long term use of cobots. Basically, basically the, the point is that if, you, if, if, the, if the company is not buying this cobot and they are doing this task, then that means that one human is making this task. Do you think that this is a task that is nice for a human to put a base, to put a building, to put a car, and to make a packet with that? This is the first point. And the second point is the other option for the company is to buy the robot. But if you buy the robot and you have different customers that they have or they want different solutions, you cannot attempt all the, all the solutions because you cannot change all the time the program. You cannot change all the time the sensors. You cannot change all the time the code because you have not the resources for that or the resources are very expensive. So your only solution is that you are not attending this demand. So the solution that we are proposing is a solution that is flexible, okay? And that is reducing the quantity of frustration that means, that means for one operator to make repetitive tasks. So it's not the perfection, it's true, it's not the perfection, okay? But it's allowing to the company, it's allowing to the company to solve a problem and to increase the market, okay? Because it, it allows to the system to increase flexibility. 